Hey friends, Russ Barkley here. Welcome back. In this short video, I want to talk about the role of digital medicine generally, and specifically the Endeavor video game for management of ADHD. Ever since the invention of smartphones, we have seen companies move into the space where they create uh, apps, usually games, where individuals can practice on the game, and it is believed that this practice leads to improved attention, improved impulse control, uh, and improved working memory. Now, it depends on what app you have as to which or all three of those might be included in the app. Uh, besides these apps that can be used on smart devices, you can also go out on the internet to several websites that allow you to, for a monthly fee, practice on a variety of these games. Now, the thing about these websites, such as Lumosity.com, just to name one, uh, is that they are not allowed to make claims that they treat mental health disorders, that is, diagnose disorders, or even medical disorders specifically, but they can claim to improve cognitive abilities that might be impaired in various diagnosed mental or medical disorders. Uh, and it's kind of the same with these apps, although they're not as well regulated. Uh, some of the companies that make these apps have gone to the FDA to get their approval for their device. Understand, however, that the guidelines for that FDA approval for a device are not as strict or as high a set of standards as if you were asking the FDA to, appro to approve uh, a drug. Uh, and I, I think that's important because oftentimes companies trade on the fact that consumers don't know about that difference. And when they see that uh, a game or an app has FDA approval, uh, they think that it has met a very high bar for standards of evidence for effectiveness and safety. Uh, and in fact, that's not the case. The bar is pretty low. There has to be some evidence of some efficacy, but it's mainly issues of safety that the FDA is most concerned about here, uh, with a device that is. Uh, so uh, we've got all these apps out there. At last count, one review I looked at a while ago counted 300 apps for either ADHD specifically or for ADHD-related cognitive deficits more generally, such as working memory, for instance. Um, and the, the problem is, as this review found, is that there's almost no research on most of these apps, uh, and the few that have research might have a paper or two, often funded by the company that's manufacturing and um, marketing the app. Uh, and so what's a consumer to, to do with these things? Uh, right now, the evidence base is so weak. Personally, I don't recommend any of these apps or games for ADHD or even any of the websites just because of the extremely limited evidence base for them out there. Uh, I'm going to uh, use uh, the Endeavor gaming program as an example of digital medicine, uh, not because they're any better or any worse than any others, but because they're the one that was in my news feed twice this week when I was looking at the trade media. Uh, Endeavor is a video game played on a smart device that uh, is supposedly improves symptoms of inattention, impulsivity, uh, other related symptoms of ADHD. And there is a version for children called Endeavor RX. Uh, that's the one that has the FDA approval. And then there is an over-the-counter called Endeavor OTC that doesn't require a prescription, uh, but both of these require a fee. Uh, and in the case of Endeavor RX, uh, also a prescription in order to access the game. Uh, so very clever there because it makes it sound like this is kind of a drug, it's digital medicine, it's FDA approved, and therefore it must meet a high bar of evidence and safety 
and, and don't be misled by that. that. That's not the case. It's just a device, and devices uh, can pass through FDA approval much, much more easily than drugs, as I've already said. So uh, Endeavor is this video game that you play that's supposed to improve these symptoms, as I've mentioned. Uh, now, what is the evidence for this? Uh, obviously, these trade articles uh, interview company representatives and they claim that it does have evidence for improving uh, inattention, uh, improving impairment, uh, and other symptoms related to ADHD. But, but is that really the case? Uh, let's take a closer look. One of the first papers on the Endeavor RX program, uh, which is manufactured by the company uh, Achille, uh, is this article that appeared in 2020 that was a uh, randomized trial of their software for children ages 8 to 12 uh, with ADHD. So uh, it's a reasonably good study. It involved random assignments. Uh, the improvements, uh, or that is the measures, were collected in a double-blind fashion. The groups went through treatment uh, in parallel fashion. Uh, and so it, it's a good controlled trial with pediatric patients. Uh, and all of these patients had to have diagnosed ADHD confirmed with clinical diagnosis. Uh, now, what's, what's the problem with this paper, which claimed to have found improvement uh, in lab tests measuring attention uh, and inhibition? The lab test they used was the TOVA, the Test of Variables of Attention. Uh, and they assessed individuals at several time points across the trial. The primary outcome measure for the trial uh, was changes in the TOVA score, uh, and in this case, the attention performance score from pre to post uh, intervention. And then they also looked at safety, side effects, and so on. But, um, so, you know, in, in terms of the rigor of the trial, it's pretty good. However, the problem here is that it's using a lab test of ADHD. And you've heard me say in other videos, particularly my one on the role of neuropsychological testing for diagnosing ADHD, that lab measures are not very good for diagnosing ADHD or for monitoring changes in treatment that reflect changes in real world behavior. Now, why is that? because these tests don't correlate significantly with rating scales of real-world ADHD symptoms or of executive functioning. So we don't know what they're predicting with regard to what's changing out there in real life. So you could get a change on a lab test that would not necessarily be reflected in any changes out there in real life as assessed by parents, teachers, or in the case of adults, uh, self-ratings. Uh, and so, it, to me, uh, it kind of obscures the issue when all you give is a lab test. <clears throat> so yes, they did find improvement um, as assessed on the TOVA measure of attention. However, if you look into the study results, you look deeply into the methods, they did collect ratings of ADHD symptoms uh, and other aspects of daily life functioning. And if you look at the results, they didn't find anything. What they found was improvements on the TOVA. And since that was their primary measure, they get to claim that this was a successful trial. But what we want to know as clinicians and as clients is, did it change their life? Uh, and at this point, the study does not suggest real-world changes. Now, here's where we need to talk about something researchers talk about. When you design a game or an intervention like this, you can look at what is called near transfer. That is, do you improve on measures in the lab that are similar to what you're practicing in the game. In this sense, the Endeavor RX program shows some near transfer. But that's not real important, as I've said, because measures in the lab often don't correlate with real life. So the next thing we want to know is far transfer. Does the results 
of the treatment program extend into real life natural settings, home, school, work, social functioning, and so on. And we didn't see that in this trial. So that's very typical of studies of these apps. For instance, CogMed was a very popular app over a decade ago for training working memory in people with ADHD. Uh, it's even more popular in Europe than it was in the US at the time. But a number of studies were done on CogMed that found that all you got, you got better at the game, you got better at measures in the lab similar to the game, but there was no convincing evidence that it extended into real life situations. So I don't hear an awful lot about CogMed anymore, uh, at least here in the US, uh, but I do hear more about this particular digital medicine application, and that's the Endeavor program. So based on that one trial, uh, I, for one, would say, well, it seems to have some promise, at least on lab measures, but we need to see that there's benefits in real life, and we didn't see it there. Uh, subsequently, another trial was published in the journal NPJ D Digital Medicine uh, that involved this game. Uh, and in this case, it was given to kids who were on medication and kids who were not on medication and in this time, they did use a impairment rating scale, and they looked at before treatment and four weeks into treatment uh, in playing this game. And what they found was that there was improvement in the impairment ratings over that time in both the treated, the stimulant treated, and the non-treated group. Uh, so that's interesting, but again, to a scientist like myself, it, it's kind of a, a so what finding because we know that if all you do is measure something with a rating scale or a test before treatment and after the treatment, you often see improvement. And it may have nothing to do with the treatment. It may have to do with contact with professionals. It may have to do with increased attention from professionals, or in this case, parents that are encouraging their children to play the game. Uh, it may have to do with practice effects on these rating scales. We've known for decades that if you give a rating scale twice to anybody, even if you don't do anything, the second score is often significantly lower than the initial score. So there's practice effects on the rating scales. And so for that reason, researchers like studies like this to give the scale once before treatment, give it again just before treatment, and then after treatment. And then you've gotten rid of the majority of practice effects, though not entirely. There continue to be improvements on rating scales with repeated applications of the scale, even when there's no intervention. But the largest jump occurs between time one and time two. Now, the second thing you need to do in a study like this is you need to have an active placebo condition, which this second study didn't have. It's just comparing the patients before and after. Uh, it, it does show that the game adds something to people who are on medication, but again, it, that's not convincing because there's no comparison placebo intervention where we might have found the same effect with a placebo game being given to these individuals that doesn't target attention and uh, other aspects of, of ADHD. So again, there's a couple trials out there. They're kind of interesting to a researcher. They're not real rigorous when it comes to looking for far transfer, using randomized trials with placebo controls and both ratings, and if you want, lab measures as well. But the naturalistic measures are much more important. Now, I know that's gotten into the weeds a little more than you like, uh, but it does exemplify what's happening in this space called digital medicine, where games and apps are being used and are being advertised for use in improving ADHD in patients. And what, what do we have? Uh, most apps and games have no evidence whatsoever other than the claims 
of the manufacturer. Even where there are studies, as in the case of the Endeavor program by Achille, these studies were funded by the manufacturer, the marketing company for the Achille app. Uh, and so one has to at least say cautiously, buyer beware, until we get independent replications of these apps, games, and specifically the Endeavor program. These are not something that I would recommend as frontline, first-line treatments for ADHD. Uh, again, as I said about neurofeedback earlier this week, uh, if you've tried the other things and you're still not satisfied with the other treatments that are evidence-based and you've got expendable income and you want to play a game, um, okay, yeah, fine, nobody's going to talk you out of doing that. But if you're claiming that these games and apps are equivalent to the science-based interventions for ADHD, uh, then I'm sorry, there's just no evidence base to support that kind of definitive conclusion about these games or apps. Uh, now, there was recently in a mental health newsletter a nice review by Andrew Schumann on mental health, health apps and should mental health providers recommend them. And they also talk here about the Endeavor app. Uh, and the conclusion of this article uh, is uh, that the, first of all, we have to be assured that the patient downloads and uses the app routinely. Second, it's helpful if benefits are seen right away because it encourages people to continue with the game. But beyond that, as he points out, the evidence base for these apps uh, is, is pretty thin. So uh, you can recommend them, if you wish, as ancillary treatments, uh, if I can even call them treatments. Uh, but uh, I certainly don't recommend them to patients myself uh, or uh, even as you know, fun things to play that might have some benefits at this point. Uh, now, just as an aside, I have a lot of trouble with relabeling a game as a digital therapeutic. It is just a game. I think the relabeling uh, is a bit uh, confusing to patients, a bit de deceptive. It implies that there's something about this game uh, that leads to some kind of medical or, or digital treatment of the, of the disorder. Uh, so, so watch out for that. Uh, again, it's just a personal preference of mine. I, I, you know, to me, it should be truth in advertising. Do games help people with ADHD? And, and don't relabel this as a digital medicine, uh, which some of these uh, promoters have. So, uh, so there you have it right now. I think this is not ready for prime time. It's not an evidence-based treatment. The evidence for most apps is wanting. The evidence for this particular game or app is pretty thin as well. And to a scientist like me, not especially convincing. So time will tell. We need a lot more research on these apps as Schumann talks about in his uh, article, editorial, if you will, here in Contemporary Pediatrics. So that's the status of the field, everybody. As always, buyer beware. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And if you like this material, please recommend us to others. Uh, otherwise, I hope you found this video informative. Thanks again, everybody. See you next time. Be well.